All right, guys, so this is the seafood case. As y'all can see, this product is soft. It is thawed. We got good airflow on each door. Uh, this case have livers, uh, other seafood products, um, but we need to get it down to temperature right now. All right, guys, so call this three-door case. Uh, product is uh, soft, uh, running at high temperature. This is the unit right here. Um, I thought it was just uh, one unit controlling at three doors, but I need to go back in and look at the other case temps. Uh, but the unit is running. We got both fans uh, running. And I went to fill my liquid line without, you know, hooking up my gauges or nothing. And that thing feel pretty warm and all that. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back inside to see if the other case temps are high. Uh, then that's, we're gonna just go from there. And yes, I got on the beanie. Um, the three-door case, we got good airflow across. It do sound like it's feeding, but like I said, the liquid line is hot. So let's get in the store. Oh, this one's running at nine. So we got this whole row and then that three-door end cap running at 10. Run about seven. So guys, that liquid line is really hot uh, going towards that spectrum house. Well, anyway, guys, we got both fans running to max capacity. And obviously, this liquid line is still hot. So more likely, we got a dirty condenser. Yeah, this thing's super hot. I need to compare it to a one that's uh, on. I'm pretty, nice. it ain't that hot though. All right, first thing first, let's go in and get the liquid line temperature so I can just show y'all. Uh, don't have to do this, but shoot, why not? Um, I hook this up. Y'all should get one of these if y'all have these. Very, very useful. I need to get another pour of these so I can have two. God damn. All right, guys. We are getting 114. This is 404A. Uh, I got to look at my PT chart. But that temperature is really high right there. I'm going to compare it to another one that's running. I got to make sure it's about the same gas or so. This one running about 96. Um, I got my uh, probe put back up. Uh, I'm going to hit it down with some water. First, I'm about to shut down the unit, uh, wash this damn thing down again. As y'all can see, y'all can see it right now, 114. Got a water hose, so yeah, let's get to it. Don't ask me about this hose. I'm just using what they have here. I got mine, I could have pulled it out, but it's, that's kind of too extra. Well, I am getting myself wet, but. I can see about 95. Still dropping. Uh, I'm going to let it settle out just a little bit. See where it like average back out once that's done. Now this liquid line sweating real good. Before it wasn't like sweating. It was probably sweating right here and it was kind of like warm right here. So that thing's sweating now. And of course, guys, I want to show y'all my cooler. Ice about melted and all, but water cold as hell. Make sure y'all stay hydrated. Um, I'm probably gonna hook my gauges up. I really don't have to, but if they don't have no straighter port where I can just read going towards that case, then I'm. Not gonna look, but look at this. The air feel much cooler, of course, right about now. But, can I just imagine if I had to change this dryer? I think I helped somebody change the dryer in one of these units before. They was a pain in the ass, but y'all let me know, man. 
Yeah, I'll let me know, yeah. Oh. My sight glass looked pretty clear, which, you know, that's good. Like I said, it's the liquid line going in. It feels way much better now, way much better. I wonder if I got a damn port. Don't got one. Oh, well, yeah. I got a port right there, but it'd be a pain in the ass to hook up, so. Anyway, guys, we got much cooler liquid. It's about 88 now compared to 114 that we had. Shoot, sometimes you, sometimes you can tell what's going on with a unit. If you just start feeling and all that without hooking your gauges up and all, you can just tell what it is. Like I said, I verified inside that we had good airflow across and I was hearing the valve, you know, feeding and I felt the line inside the case, that thing was hot as hell. Um, so I knew off the bat I had to come out here both cadets are fans running. I'm surprised one wasn't out. So no fans are running 100% and it's still not able to remove uh, the heat from inside. Uh, you know, it tells me that we got a, like a dirty, filthy cadet. So usually sometimes with your condensers, you can see right through the coil on the other side. But you know, over time, uh, you know, with, you know, different weather elements, you know, dust, um, winds, um, it could take a toll on the unit and stuff, and including the age also, but. Right now I'm hitting it one more time. Yes, the unit is on. Everybody got their own different preference, but right now I'm doing this so the temps could come down. But I'm gonna end up uh, washing the uh, unit. I'm gonna end up turning it off and uh, spraying some uh, good coil cleaner on there. All right, guys, so the coil cleaner I'm gonna be using is this bad boy right here. All right, guys, temps. That's at five, six, three degrees, so it's dropping down. I feel like it's getting colder in here. I'm gonna give it some time. All right, guys, so my liquid line temperature before was 114 degrees. If I convert that, I'm getting about 287 PSI on that liquid side. That's not the discharge side from the compressor. Uh, this is the liquid side. Uh, after, uh, you know, the fan's supposed to be rejecting the heat, we got 287 PSI. So that was uh, pretty super hot. Uh, now it's running around 96, so I should be like around 100 uh, through 115 PSR so the liquid line feel much cooler uh, so what I'm going to do I'm going to add this chemical right here I'm going to hit it while it's running I still want the box stuff to uh, drop down I mean it's below 10 it's still dropping down it's going to be a while because we got a lot of heat in that case still um, and I still got other calls stacking up uh, on me and uh, another tech I'm working with, so I gotta uh, be in and out, can't uh, too much prolong it. So I'm gonna wash it down real quick and uh, just go from there. That's how I have my hose over there. So guys, as you can see, the case temperature is down. It's still dropping. Like I said, we got heat in that case, but it's still dropping. Um, I was thinking about skipping the defrost time, but because I want to shut the unit off, so I'm gonna just put it in defrost. 
express their fans and all that's gonna be off and then I'm gonna rinse it down. Um, I could have let it miss a defrost, but I don't wanna go uh, do, uh, through that, so yeah. Anyway, guys, this is the time clock right here. Um, it was, you know, gonna get, it was gonna go and defrost about four o'clock. Um, hey, I hate to do this. I might just shut the unit off. I might just shut the unit off. Uh, Cause I want to keep the time clock, you know, the same time frame. I don't want to have it and put it back. Then they go right back in the defrost. Uh, so I'm gonna make this pretty quick. All right, got it off right now. Both fans are stopping. And crazy thing about it, I had talked to my coworker not too long ago. I told him what you know I was working on. He worked on this unit before, and he had a pain uh, getting that motor out. Or I think he was trying to put it in. I don't know. If, I think I had to come back and put it in. But anyway, we was just talking about this unit right here. Anyway, got a little bit chemical. I already had one about this damn full. Now I got it about right here. And it's real muddy over here in this area. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna let that sit for a little minute. Um, after I let it sit, then uh, I'm gonna rinse it off real good. Um, like I said, um, I'm pressed on time right about now. Um, like, literally, we got like emergency calls I didn't get to. Y'all gonna see it in a bit. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna get back with y'all when the unit is back on. Uh, like I said, I really didn't have to help my gauges up. I did help my gauges up, just went off my. Uh, Temp probe and just converted the temperature, uh, you know, to the pressure and all that. Uh, like I said, liquid line was at 114, so it was having about 287 psi on the liquid side going towards the case. Um, mind you, not the discharge from the compressor on the liquid side. And I'm pretty sure most of y'all familiar, like how the refrigeration cycle works. But this is the compressor right here. This is our discharge line right here. This is our suction line right here. Um, we just got nothing but vapor, never liquid inside a compressor. Uh, so the compressor, all the thing to do is takes that low pressure uh, vapor and uh, compress it to a higher uh, discharge uh, pressure. Um, so it's gonna be coming out here, going through the condenser and the fans are going to be rejecting uh, the heat and then the liquid line which is got down right there go through that receiver tank go through that filter dryer and go to your case so on this side it's going to be hot you know it's supposed to be super hot and all that but towards the liquid side going towards your case it should be way cooler and all that um I hope that makes sense. I just put it in the simple terms and I'm pretty sure most of y'all guys who've been in this trade, y'all know it and all. Um, so it's just something simple, not too crazy. I'm glad we ain't had no compressor out. Just imagine you have to change that big boy in this type of space and environment. That's gonna be hell. And not to mention, what if you gotta change the filter dryer? Oh hell, what if we had a leak on this bad boy? That's gonna be a pain in the ass. <laughs> Alright guys, so I'm giving it a little minute for the uh rinse it down. Um so yeah, let's get to it. Alright guys, so I'm finna rinse it down right now. I did it with the unit on and uh, I'm doing it with the unit off.
let me know which uh, direction y'all go. I go up and down or you go side to side. Well, anyway, I'm finna get her uh, squared away. I'm gonna get it real good off camera. All right, guys, so we back at 112 again. So uh, we failed the first time. What I'm about to do is take this whole cover uh, top off uh, and get inside of it. All right, guys, so I'm gonna hit it inside and out. I'm gonna spray some uh, coil cleaner in there and there, and I'm gonna get it on the outside again, let it sit for another good second. I thought we had it the first time, but apparently we don't. I'm trying to make sure I got it. Um, I can see through, but it look like we do got debris still in the way, so um, yeah. Also went ahead and changed my hose, why not? Got my personal ones. So I'm finna rinse this down and I'm about to uh, get inside here really well. So anyway, I get back with y'all. All right, guys, we got more foam. I got it inside and on out uh, over there too. Oh yeah. Dirty. So guys, I would just recommend getting inside and out. Um, I thought just getting that outside uh, would it, you know, did a trick. Most of the time it does, most of the time. Uh, but it's my first time coming across something like this where you wash it down and it does it again. So this thing must have been real filthy. Anyway, I'm gonna let it sit for a while uh, before I rinse it off and uh, just go from there. Anyway, I'm gonna let it sit for a while uh, before I rinse it off and uh, just go from there. All right, guys, so no luck. Right now I got a hose uh, keeping this, uh, help to keep this condenser uh, cool. Ninety one. My liquid line feel better. I hate to leave it like this, but I got to. I got other calls stacking up on me right about now. Um, if y'all got any opinion, y'all can drop it. Um, I tried checking my uh, discharge presser uh, from that side to see where it was uh, running at. Uh, but I got to get some damn vice grips. My other one's uh, broke. Um, the damn stem on there has got damn stripped, which is goddamn crazy. So tomorrow I need to return with some vice grips uh, hookup. Um, this is air to cool. So obviously our fans are running perfectly. We got good air uh, blowing, you know, towards this way. Uh, both of them running. We don't got no defective blade or anything of that nature. Uh, we do got it at the right rotation. Um, I watched this thing five times. Um, I got it footage of y'all. I, well, I got footage of it as y'all have seen, but off camera I was going ham on it. Like I was nearly ran out of damn coil cleaner because I'm drenching this thing, letting it sit, uh, trying to get this thing down. Now, my main concern is hoping we don't got no non condensables in uh, this uh, gas right here. I mean, I know it's hot and all that, but that condenser might need to get cleaned out at least a couple more times um after cleaning it for the what fifth or sixth time man it still ain't doing no good my liquid line is still uh, running warm um like i said i can't i don't have access um to that side but based off the uh, line temp i can convert the temp to the pressure that i'm getting but for sure i need to come back tomorrow and hook up on that discharge side and um, just go from there. Uh, if y'all have any tips, y'all let me know. Um, like I said, uh, I didn't use my gauges. Um, most of the time you don't have to, but most of the time you can. That's what it's gonna tell you, but it's really important. Um, I'm, in my honest opinion, I think that condenser is super filthy. I mean, I can see through it, 
but I can still see like dirt and grit still so it's pretty nasty but um if I come back tomorrow man I'm gonna just have to hook up and uh, just go from there well guys I hate to leave it like that but I will be back tomorrow I was just talking to the manager and all that she was like why they just cannot replace the units and all that uh, these units are very old very very old I'm not gonna lie um, but I'm glad and thankful that you know we're still able to you know help maintain them and all that uh, this is a store that looked like a, a, a ghost town like the right room if y'all haven't seen uh, none of my shorts or any other videos uh, I will recommend going back um, but I doubt we got non-condensables in the system but I will be surprised but I will be back to reevaluate I'm have to go buy and get me some um, vice grips because them king valves are stripped like really stripped and I'm look at my freaking so I did everything uh to my power um I like really like was soaking it uh down uh, really well I was going inch by inch uh cross and up and down so I tried everything I mean I could see through the other side just a, a little bit still but I think it's just that grit and all that just over time just like probably just hard in there because i sprayed directly inside with that um condenser coil cleaner and on the uh, front side and i let it sit and i did that about five times out there um you know but probably been like six times and i called my uh co-worker on there got another guy that's about my age and we uh discussed it over and all me and him on call right now we uh on call buddies uh we be uh sharpening each other uh, uh irons um we'll be trying to you know give uh advice uh, we always talk about jobs uh, what we see we always helping each other out and all that like we we feed off each other and all that um so we the only two young guys. I mean, other guys way older and stuff. And sometimes they can be grouchy and all that. So we just depend on ourselves and all that. And shoot, I learned from y'all guys too. Um, y'all, you know, give me input and all that. I need it. I'm a young buck, but I don't want to use that as an excuse either. So um, I'm still, you know, learning and evolving. Um, so y'all let me know. Uh, I know most of y'all would say, should have put your gauges on, but I didn't have to do that if I, I should have did it, all right? I should have did it, always put your gauges on, but most of the time you don't have to put your gauges on a unit. Um, I've been with senior techs and so you don't have to put gauges on a unit most of the time. Just being experienced and in the field and stuff, man, you can just tell. Uh, like I said, our sight glass is clear. It's just that we got a super hot liquid line going towards the case. Now, there's got to be going something going on with the condenser. Our fan blade is not defective. Fan motors are uh, running fine. So it's just a, a weird situation. And I checked the other units beside it. The, I checked them. I mean, they pretty cool. But but tomorrow or whenever I'm gonna come back and reevaluate the situation. Um, I do want to. There won't be no point checking strainers if my line is going hot to the case, but I could though, just to be on the safe side. But y'all let me know, I'm not going to do all this talking and all that. Let me know, let me know, let me know. Uh, let me know y'all opinion. Like I said, we got a super hot liquid line going towards um, the cases. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So y'all be safe out here, see y'all. And uh, the temperatures are down. Uh, in the boxes, they are down. Uh, so we're gonna see what we're gonna see tomorrow. Uh, so I'll see y'all.